welcome the after lunch talk. I hope you had all the coffee or something. You know the problem always after the lunch is heavy eyes, right? Uh, I will announce my, it's luckily my colleague as well, Patrick, he's doing a talk about a journey we had finding a bug in Postgres and the whole uh, idea of when the bug was found and how we fixed it. So questions we will do after the talk to make sure that we make it on time and so on. And uh, yeah, then feel free. Thank you, Dirk. Um, yeah, welcome that you made it after lunch. Uh, I know it's not easy. That's the first slot after lunch, but uh, we'll, we'll try to get through it and uh, go on. So for those that don't know Ivan, uh, I usually don't do the, the whole what is our company uh, thing, but for, in this case, it's actually relevant. Uh, we operate a lot of PG instances, uh, about uh, 100,000 nodes or so. Uh, so we run into all, all the workflows, all the edge cases that our customers find. and. Uh, so even at our very smallest scale compared to the big players, uh, we do see some things uh, that happen that some, nobody uh, went through before. So at the beginning of this year, uh, we released PG 16.1 to our customers as a pre-release version. Uh, so it was, not, it was in the dropdown, but the default version was still 15. Uh, so we had a couple of them tried out, and at some point I noticed in Slack, you know, we get all our uh, alerts into Slack and noticed there are some services that are more prone to data corruption errors, and it turned out to be all the PG-16 instances. Uh, well, 0.15% of the PG instances, but it was uh, significant enough for us to investigate um, and we also thought it was only PG-16 that was affected, um, which actually helped us in investigating it because there was a change in PG-16 that amplified it, uh, but more on that later. And to compound to this, we also just released 16.2, which meant a lot of our nodes were recycled. That means uh, we do seamless upgrades uh, for minor versions, and those nodes got uh, physical replicated to a new host and then the DNS switched and failed over and uh, so a lot of lot of those nodes were actually new nodes and so we thought ah oh, maybe it's something in 16.2 uh, which also wasn't the case uh, yeah so uh, very intensive two or three weeks uh, ensued after that so this is what you don't want to uh, see uh, when you when you look at your PostgreSQL log um, there's a reader uh, in this file, and we could read zero of uh, one page, uh, which is not a lot, to be honest. And so we, we have alerting for that. Uh, we, we parse our log files, and if something like this happens, we, we get alerts. Our ops people get alerted. We have runbooks for that. Uh, but it was escalated to us as a team uh, because the, the ops people uh, didn't have the time to, to dig that deep. So we declared uh, an internal incident. Um, even though only 12 PG instances were affected, it was, uh, it looked like an issue and it was a persistent issue. It wouldn't go away. It would sometimes randomly go away, but uh, usually it wouldn't, wouldn't resolve itself. And so what do you do in such a case? Um, you try to remember uh, how PG works internally, uh, or somebody remembers anyway, and tries, try to trace where these uh, exceptions come from. Obviously, we Googled uh, zero usable results. There were some results in like Chinese, but they also didn't include PG-16, so we were pretty sure we were the first ones. We also uh, looked at the various mailing lists, obviously. Uh, we couldn't find any mention of it, um, but we were sure there, there was an issue there. So analyzing the error, um, we noticed uh, that in this error message, uh, could actually read block three. That's the offset in the file that is printed here. Um, every, every data file is stored in the base directory, then um, shorted into the database OID, and then you find a table by PG class rel file node. Uh, if you look that up in the, in the catalog, you find out which table uh, this file belongs to. And we also noticed that 
this block number was always at the end of the file. So it looked like we didn't really have data corruption, but it could have been data corruption. We were not sure, uh, but it was better to have uh, something not read uh, at the end of the file than in the middle of the file somewhere. So we were actually happy to discover this. Uh, that's basically what I, what I told you before. Um, you also have the data uh, or, or the, the relation or the, the tuples here. You have the free space map, uh, more on that later, and the visibility map, and some other files. So how does uh, PostgreSQL store data? Um, we store data in files up to one gigabyte, and then it, they, you get uh, rel uh, node ID dot one, dot two, and so on. Um, files grow on demand. That's going to come into play later as well. And as I said, they're organized in pages or blocks, depending on which layer in PostgreSQL you talk to, uh, either it's pages or blocks. Um, don't quote me on which, which one is which. Um, they're a kilobyte. And the page looks like this. You have the header in the front, and then item ID pointers that point to items. And this is, uh, this is for, for all the, all the heap, uh, heap pages. It's the same. Uh, behind, you can specify some special fields. Uh, it's also in the page header how long the special field is and so on. And the important thing is items grow from the back of the page and the, the pointers at the front start from the front of the page. And then on disk, it looks like this. You have a, <coughs> you have a file that has various pages or blocks, again, depending on which layer you're talking to. And yeah, that sets us up for the, for the next part, um, to the source. Uh, I always tell this <coughs> to people, uh, please read the PostgreSQL source code if you have an error message. Um, the documentation is also fine, uh, but uh, I, I personally find the source code very readable, uh, very traceable, and there are always comments in there. So, yeah, if we get an error message that we never encounter, we do OK or grab uh, on, on the code. And we see it's the second language in the storage manager. And if you go there, we see we try to write, read some bytes. And if we didn't get the block size, we either report this error message, which we didn't get, which would be uh, basically a reader, or um, we could read only zero bytes of something. So. We were pretty sure we didn't have a, a, a real data corruption, but something was still fishy going on there. The file is just short. Uh, we're trying to read past the end of the file. So some, something in Postgres was telling, uh, telling the storage manager to go past, past the, uh, how, how large a file was. And then we, well, we're gonna call PGSQL box. We wrote a short summary. Uh, my colleague did this. Um, we were really sorry we didn't have any information on, on any more information, but we just write this uh, if somebody else has an idea or encountered this. Um, because we, we were also Googling, right? We didn't find anything, and at least this way it's uh, documented somewhere, it's searchable, it's findable. And yeah, we noticed that there were only uh, issues on insert or update statements or copy statements. Uh, copy statements happen, happened a lot to trigger, trigger this bug, this suspected bug, I should say. And then a couple of days later, we noticed, uh, well, it's the free space map. Uh, we definitely have a free space map corruption, um, which shifted our whole investigation to, to another part of, of PG. And so what does the free space map do? Um, I told you that uh, the, the on-disk uh, heap layout looks like this, and now the, the question is where can we add a new tuple into, into this whole mess of, of data? Um, naive approach would be to go through everything and just uh, find, find some space in there, uh, parse all the headers. Uh, not so efficient. Uh, nobody would be happy about this. Then next, <coughs> will be to keep a list uh, or a, a binary tree or a hierarchy of where to write stuff, and that is basically the free space map. Free space map answers the, que answer the questions, uh, where can we store things? 
Oh, another stretch is obviously just append to the to the file, uh, but adding eight kilobytes every time you need to write two bytes is not not really what you want. And um, free space map is uh, can tell you where is the next block that contains n bytes, basically. It's rebuilt on vacuum full and analyzed full if it's missing. Uh, so if you RM it on disk, you will uh, you, you can re reconstruct it basically, which does then go through everything. And it's stored in this underscore uh, free space map file. No, that's basically what I, what I just told you uh, a bit, bit more graphically. Uh, free space map can tell you where, where, is, uh, where you have space for seven bytes for at least 30, uh, 32 bytes or at least uh, 219 bytes. There's also a wiki page on the PostgreSQL wiki uh, that tells you how you can find uh, free space map issues where some, some issues where the sizes don't match. So we ran this query actually before we wrote the, the, the second mail to the, the PGSQL uh, box uh, mailing list. Um, we've, we've seen indeed there is an issue with the free space map. So this was great, uh, great discovery uh, because these errors are usually uh, recoverable, um, but there's usually some downtime uh, because you need to do vacuum full and on a busy database you don't really want to do that. Um, but it fixes it without a restart, uh, but it uh, requires a uh, think share exclusive block, uh, which is not that great. What you also can do is uh, a bit more invasive, uh, restart, uh, stop PG, uh, remove the free space map and do an analyze full uh, on your table, uh, which is a bit more involved, uh, but it doesn't lock it for, for too long and the analyze will just run in parallel. Of course, all your inserts will be slow uh, during that time, uh, but that's, that's a trade-off. Uh, at least you can insert again. We also had a third way, uh, which is by cheating. Uh, we have uh, our custom extension installed, or we have the ability to install our custom extension into our customers' databases. Uh, so we added a new function called PG Truncates Free Space, uh, which does this with a very short lock on the catalog. And this just takes a very, very short lock and can fix it online. Uh, we submitted this patch to the, to the commit fest, uh, but it was deemed a bit too dangerous, a bit uh, too, too invasive, uh, so we retracted our patch. Uh, we still have it in our extension, but we will probably also remove it since uh, we haven't seen this issue anymore and we can still bring it back if we, if we need to. But uh, if it's in our extension, also our customers can call it and cause, cause potential issues with the data without us knowing about it. So. So after some uh, after some some time, we got actually got feedback from Noah Mish, uh, who helped us out a lot with this uh, with this issue. Um, he asked uh, the right questions, which lead led us to uh, go through the root cause again, uh, shifting our, our uh, focus on the free space map uh, corruption cases. And we also dumped some wall file for some very short relations, uh, like the block free. Uh, we filtered the wall files to, to look at the writes to these files, and we noticed that uh, actually we do have an issue there. And the error seemed to propagate to new nodes, uh, which we then also discovered, and also into the backup, obviously. So. If we write a single tuple into PostgreSQL, uh, we consult the free space map uh, to get a page if in our space. Then after locking this page, and we, if we don't see enough free space, we move uh, to the next entry in the free space map. And if all pages are full, uh, we grow the file uh, by one page, or create a new file and uh, initialize it. Growing a file changed ever so slightly in, in PG16. Um, we now count all the processes that are trying to get a lock uh, on this page uh, to allocate enough for everybody, right? Enough for everybody that's waiting on a lock. Uh, so we make the file actually 
instead of uh, enlarging it uh, like five times by, by five pages, we now allocate 25 pages in one go, and all the other processes don't need to uh, have file access after that. I mean, they still want to write, so they still have file access, but they don't need to um, enlarge the file. Uh, we knew the bug must have been amplified by this change, uh, but we still uh, still couldn't, couldn't prove it, and uh, after staring at the code for a week, it was still not much easier to find, especially because we didn't have, still didn't have a way to reproduce it. So, how it works. Um, when we grow a file, we extend the free space map uh, to tell the free space map, ah, oh, there's now more space in the file. Then we extend the file, and we have great success because the free space map and the file are uh, in sync. If we extend the free space map, uh, this is wall locked in certain conditions. It extends the file by zero pages, which means everything's free there. Extending a relation is not wall locked until something writes into it. So it extends, also extends it by, by zero pages, but uh, as it's not wall locked, it doesn't propagate to your new host and the wall, uh, the, the free space map change may have been propagated to the new host already. So on the original host, everything's fine. On your replica, it's broken. So as, every, every, as long as everything stays on one machine, there's no issue. But since we released 16.2 and had a huge turnover in machines, uh, we experienced this uh, in 0.15% in of our machines. So if you fail over or do a point in time recovery, you can end up with a wall record uh, already applied to the free space map, uh, but no data written yet to the relation. Um, and this got, this got uh, very amplified by uh, allocating more space. So if the free space map points, uh, that's the state uh, when we found the bug. The free space map points to a block uh, beyond file boundary, we would just fail the write and fail the transaction in the end. So it was still recoverable, uh, and it sometimes uh, would also recover by itself if you had a big enough copy to actually add more data than the free space map uh, told you there was. Uh, we could actually still get out of this, out of this condition. Uh, which didn't make debugging it uh, any easier. Um, but yeah, you, we, we needed the right amount of data to reproduce it in the end. So we corresponded with uh, Noah Misch mainly um, to how, how can we get out of this? Um, you don't need to read all of this, obviously. Uh, this is just for reference. Uh, so basically, the, the free space map is uh, not, not assumed to be trusted because we still get a page lock and then see if, if, if we really s still have the space in this page. So it's not really, uh, I mean, it's trusted, but it's also trust but verify, uh, I think. So there was talk about it, it how can we make this, uh, do we need to weaken the trust there? Uh, do we need to enforce the free space map functions to behave properly? Or how, how do we do this without uh, breaking insert performance in the end? So our first naive approach uh, from my colleague, Ronan, uh, was to just check the file size uh, on every insert. And that, but that means that it's one system call per tuple, which means the performance uh, got noticeably slower, even with, uh, with SSD benchmarks. Uh, we had 1.25% in uh, uh, regression. Um, so this clearly uh, was, was uh, if it was probably, if it was the, the only solution to the problem, maybe we could have, could have made it work, but uh, it was deemed there was another approach. So Noah refined our patch and, well, he basically rewritten it. Uh, so when we find a free space map entry, we now check the size of the relation. Um, this is still a system call, but it gets cached on a per process level. Uh, whereas in the tuple insert case, this, uh, this value doesn't get cached because it's on a different layer in the, in, in the, it's in storage manager basically. And since we only do this once per big insert batch, uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, 
and the slowdown was only 0.1%, and this patch now ended up uh, in PG as of 16.3. Uh, we obviously backported it uh, for our customers and uh, tested it in, in production, and uh, yeah, it seemed, out, seemed to work out fine. Some takeaways. Um, reach out to the community. If, we, if somebody reached out, I'm sure somebody probably walked into this uh, before us, and it would have been nice to, to have at least some hint that we're not uh, making this up. <laughs> uh, especially after staring at the code for, for one week, you, you start to think you're making stuff up. Um, if, you have, uh, if you have customers, uh, a big fleet, uh, allow the customers to experiment uh, with new versions. Uh, it doesn't really hurt. Uh, in the, the new PG versions are usually very stable. Uh, so, yeah, also try to get beta versions out. We don't uh, at the moment, but uh, I'm, I'm trying to push for that. <laughs> and, yeah, make them, make them aware of the risk, but let them, let them experiment with new versions uh, because developers are always eager to try out new versions. Um, yeah, and monitor your systems and logs, please, uh, because if you don't notice this, uh, your write will just fail uh, or succeed, and then you end up in very bad situations. Also what helped us, uh, I know it's not, not possible for everybody, uh, but we have the infrastructure to build packages uh, to patch uh, PG if needed, uh, to back patch things, and uh, we also have our own extension, which helped us to very fastly iterate on this issue and uh, give our ops people the tools in hand uh, to resolve this issue without having noticeable downtime. Still, the performance was, was, uh, was uh, affected if you remove the free space map or truncate it. Obviously, insert performance uh, suffers, but uh, it's better than having all your inserts fail. And that's about it from me. We have a lot of time for questions, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Also, I was asked to put the feedback QR code on my slides here, so if you have feedback, uh, please give feedback on all, all the talks you attend. It, it helps uh, the organizers and as well as the speakers. Hi, thank you for this talk. Uh, did you notice this uh, error before any customers? And uh, do you have any more uh, al alerts uh, prepared for finding uh, bugs because other cloud providers haven't heard the uh, present uh, alerts for uh, Postgres related bugs. Um, did we find the, the issue before what? Uh, we, I was asking myself that in, in preparation for, for this talk. Uh, I'm not sure anymore, but I don't think we had, we had many. I mean, we reached out to them and told them uh, you have issues, uh, obviously. Uh, but since there was only 12 services and it was still considered not, the, not our default version, I mean, we still have full support for it, obviously. But uh, uh, I think they, they noticed after we reached out to them. I mean, obviously, they notice if, if your, your copy or your import uh, just dies, uh, it's, it's obvious that something's happening. Uh, so, but they never reached out to us directly. And yeah, monitoring your log, uh, start with the errors. Uh, that's probably the, the best, best way to start. And, there's the, the read block error. There's also page some page errors uh, that we do monitor for. Uh, yeah. Hi. Uh, thank you very much for the nice talk. I have two questions. One is, uh, did you observe this only during the upgrade, or did it happen afterwards? Meaning, during the upgrade, everything was fine, and then later on, it got corrupted. This was the first question. The second one, I have never heard of Analyze Full. I just checked the documentation. It wasn't mentioned there. Tried it on <laughs> my cluster, didn't work. Just wanted to know whether it's a feature of your cluster or is it something that uh, Postgres supports? Thank you. So, I'm actually not sure anymore. I need to probably Google that. Uh, maybe I wrote it wrong on the slides. Uh, sorry about that. And the first question was about... Upgrade. Oh, the upgrade, yeah. So the nature of the issue was that uh, on, on 
if you didn't fail over or did a point in time recovery, this would never have manifested because if you stay on your node, uh, everything's fine. Uh, because on disk, the relation was extended actually and had the proper size. But if we failed over, uh, it was not in the ball file, so it was never replicated uh, to the other node. This only gets replicated if you write to, to the relation and then the uh, relation gets a proper size. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, so did I get it correctly that the issue was introduced in 16.2 and fixed in 16.3? No, it was uh, actually present since forever. Uh, in, in every version? Yeah, and I think we backpatched it, it to, or Noah did anyway, to 13 dot something, because in uh, between mm -hmm. 12 and 13 something changed in the free space map calculations, and it was, uh, I mean, 12 was, was going end of, end of uh, mm -hmm. life anyway, so... But, but it, it, it was amplified by this change, by this optimization that we allocate more pages uh, in Mongo. It was extremely amplified uh, because there was more, more time between, mm -hmm. between extending the free space map and actually using, uh, using the, the, the new space in the table. So this, this issue became more visible since Postgres 16? Yes. Yeah, that's correct. I observed the problem too, but uh, didn't uh, pay enough attention to trace the uh, root cause. Uh, did you write a test to reproduce this behavior? So per perhaps like we can have similar errors in future and perhaps we can have a top test that uh, reproduces the problem. So in highly available cluster, it's relatively easy to reproduce it, like just do a failover. And uh, uh, pr probably top test would be good for like hardening the system in future. I don't remember what, what ended up in the, in the final patch, uh, to be honest. Uh, I, I would need to check. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But if you search for free space map in, in beginning of March, uh, you should find it in the commit log. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, if we've got a standby cluster that's been running for a long time and we've never failed over, does the new patch correct any outstanding issues or do we need to do some maintenance on our standby so that if we do fail over, we don't experience the corruption? If the, if the new node has the, the uh, a version release after, what was it, March? Uh, or yeah, so April? Let's, let's say we're, we're running 16.0 and we've had it running for a year and we've never done a switch over. The, so the standby could have this problem. You will still have this problem, yes. Okay, so how do we fix it on the standby? We reinstantiate it, or does the patch, when we upgrade to 16.3, does the patch detect and fix it if it exists? Yeah, if, if it exists uh, with, uh, and you, you have 16.3 on your standby, it will be, will be fine. Okay, fine, so there's no remedial work. Or you remove the free space map uh, with Maya, any of the methods I, I, I okay. showed here. Uh, Upgrading's probably easier. <laughs> Thanks. Minor versions are usually not an issue. Uh, thank you for the presentation and explanation. Uh, I have uh, such questions. So uh, you are telling that uh, earlier versions are uh, also could be affected with this uh, error. And uh, you used uh, initially either vacuum full or uh, removing uh, free space map file and uh, analyze full with restart. Uh, so it appeared to be the probably recreation of uh, all relation related uh, files on disk uh, to solve this problem, right? like uh, vacuum full should uh, recreate uh, all files including free space map and uh, analyze full recreates uh, free space map uh, haven't you tried uh, such extension as uh, pg repack which uh, also recreates a, a relation and uh, just switches to switch it uh, a little bit later with uh, an even smaller uh, log, uh, full log time, and uh, with no restart. Um, 
we I think we, we offered that to a couple of our users, um, but PG Repatch is very invasive, so we didn't want to run this for them uh, on their machines. Uh, with uh, vacuum full, we could just do that uh, without involving too much customer data. Uh, we're always very wary of accessing customers' data, obviously. Uh, so it, the, the, the least amount of uh, complexity we, we have in solving an issue is, is, is the better for, in the end, our customers. Thank you. No one? No, not, not you. <laughs> yeah. um, I want to know if you have any way to replay customers' applications load, like PG Replay used to do. I don't know if that's still alive. I didn't uh, understand it acoustically. Um, do you have a way to replay customers' load? On a test bed? How to replay? Uh, no, we don't lock the, the statement. I mean, if they use PG Audit, maybe, but yeah. We usually, we usually try to not touch uh, anything that's not encrypted uh, in backups and, and so on. Uh, because, yeah, that's, that's just the issue with that. And if you, if you, if you never do it, you, you don't run into issue, issues with that. Okay. Would be pretty rude if we would do this. To be honest, right? Just to. I would be a dream actually, <laughs> but for some issues, yeah. Anyone? Okay. Then. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you. And you're dismissed.